<coughs> to a building on Ashworth Avenue, the uh, laundromat that burned down. Oh, the line okay. goes underground to the to where they're re-erecting re that building. Okay, okay, I have no problem with that. All right. All those in favor? We have four and one abstention. Um, next, we have appointments. Renee Boudreau, Parks and Recreation. Good evening. Good evening, sir. I am here on behalf of the um, new mowing bid that we had to just complete for the 2020 through 22 cycle. It's a three-year contract, um, and we had four people bid, and JLG Landscaping came in at the lowest. I did all their background checks. Everything sounds very good. They got very good reviews from all their references, and I see it's a, as a multi-year contract. You guys need to approve it, I guess. So I am here to do that. We must make the motion to be approve it. Any questions, Mrs. Wilson? Yeah. Is this a new outfit? Have you dealt with them before? How many bids did you get? This, we got four bids. We put out 10. Oh. We got four. Okay. Uh, two of them were existing companies that we've used in the past, and okay. they came in significantly higher than this company. And I did background checks. They work with the town of Newington. The town of Summersworth, and oh, they, okay. they have rave reviews. So they've worked in state. Uh, <coughs> you're comfortable with that. And how yes, many years is this? This is a three year contract. Three year contract. Okay. Thank you. So is this the lowest bid? Yes. Yeah. Do we need a waiver for where we don't have three bids? We have, no, we we have four. I mean, where we, we have, have where we only did the, the four. So we, we're all set. No, they right? did 10. They did 10, but we only had four bids coming out. Right. We're required to get three. Three. Fine. Thank okay. you. Okay. And a motion we have from Jim, second, second with Rusty. All those in favor? Four and one exemption. And, um, and Renee, while he's there, yeah? just quickly, on, on Friday afternoon, whomever was supposed to do the tree for you didn't show up, right? Yeah, we had some emergency tree decorating on Friday. And, and Renee so, uh, and Beth upstairs really and Public Works got to work and made sure that the tree was lighted for Friday night. Yes. Good job. Thank well, you. that's good. You, your experience comes in when we need it. Excellent Thank job you. of the tree lighting, Renee. You. I saw you down uh, there all afternoon. And the Thank snow removal. <laughs> yes, Public Works helped greatly with some uh, last minute snow removal and made me feel much more comfortable. So well, we them and GMCO and, and, yes. and, and Public Works and you guys, you did an excellent job. Thank and you congratulations much. on the job well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Next we have Chief Ayotte Fire Department. I don't see him. Not here yet. Okay. So we will move to the um, RSA 41 colon 14 dash small a number one for second street vote to release of deed restrictions for single family four bedroom and subdivision re restrictions yes uh, the board at its last meeting had the second public hearing on this matter and at that time I spoke with attorney sorry concerning an idea of uh, looking at the uh, building as uh, the new five bedroom building uh, replacing two four bed, two two bedroom <laughs> cottages and uh, I had suggested the idea of pulling the garage back so that there would be space for four uh, compliant parking spaces uh, since that time uh, on Friday attorney sorry and I met with uh, the owner and um, let there be light the a uh, a different a slightly different plan came to mind where instead of pulling the garage back the garage would be pulled forward more towards the right-of-way uh, thereby to accomplish uh, several things uh, there would be three spaces inside um, three compliant spaces inside uh, it seemed to me that that was a workable design except there would be some additional uh, you would have to go back through the process once more for a couple of items. One item would be, uh, because this is a 50-foot lot, there would be some uh, small encroachment on the setback that's required under the deed restriction, so that they would have to go back through the process not only for uh, that purpose, <laughs> 
but also to go to the ZBA. And the second item would be that because you now have a three-car garage rather than a two, that's another uh, item to need a relief from the deed restriction because the deed restriction now says no more than a two-car garage. Uh, so uh, those items I think the applicant will be pursuing, uh, but in discussing this with Fred, uh, the thought was that we would present to you at least to vote on the items that have already gone through the process so far, the three items, uh, namely that uh, one single family dwelling, wh where these were originally two lots, it applies to the two lots together because these restrictions were imposed before the lots were subdivided. So you still have two, even with the new structure, you still have two lots, two uh, buildings. So you would give him relief from the single family dwelling uh, and uh, no more than four bedrooms. Uh, and nor shall the premises be subdivided. They were subdivided already. Uh, so you'd be giving relief to th the three things, basically, at this time. Mm -hmm. And did you want to say something? Um, Please not at all. Uh, <laughs> very, very good presentation. <clears throat> I move, that, I move that the board modify the first two sentences in deed restriction number four and a certain quick claim deed from the town of Hampton to Henry J. Carpinella and Renee and Renina, Renina M. Capanella. I hope I didn't ruin those names. Dated September 17, 1984, and recorded at the Rockingham County Registry of Deeds in Book 2512, page 46, which formally reads as follows. Do I have to read all that? Uh, Yes? Yes, please. The only structures permitted to be erected or placed upon said lot shall be one single family dwelling containing no more than four bedrooms with no more than a two car garage. The grantee will not erect any buildings upon the premises within seven feet of any boundary line, nor should the premises be subdivided. And so the same will now read as follows The only structures permitted to be erected or placed upon said lot shall be no more than two single family dwellings containing no more than five bedrooms each with no more than two-car garage. The grantee will not erect any buildings upon the premises within seven feet of any boundary line. Said modification to be memorialized and modification of deed restriction document to be drafted by the town attorney for selectman signatures and recordings. I'll second. Okay, any questions, Mrs. Wolseley? Yes. Why do we have plural here? The only structures permitted to be erected. I thought this is a, a single household with the garage underneath. This is the second street property. We just went through this last week. And you showed room for two cars and what I would call a basement. And now you're going to expand that to three. And this says no more than a two car garage. What are we doing here? Who are you directing your question to? Well, a council or whoever wants to answer. And then for the only structures permitted. I thought you were wiping out two structures to have the one single family structure there. Uh, With, the, the, uh, the word structures plural is what appears in the deed. Therefore, it has to stay that way? Yes. Well, and you would, you would want it that way anyway because there are actually as I said, Mary Louise, when this deed restriction was imposed, the two lots side by each were one. I, I, I'm having a problem with this here, folks. Well, that, that's... I thought, I thought this was to convert the use of this parcel, which once contained two independent structures, and now it's still the one parcel, but it's going to have only one large structure on it with a, a garage where the basement would be. Peter, did you want to answer that where it's your clients? No, it's, she's correct. I, I don't understand the confusion. It's going to be one building with three, three, three cars, parking for three full-size parking Use the spaces. microphone, Peter. Thank yes. you, nice gentleman. Thank you. I know. I'm being mean to you. Uh, Right now, uh, there's no room to get any cars into this property to meet the 18-foot depth that you need for, for cars. 
if they're outside the garage, they'll be in the state, uh, in the town right of way. And we're trying to avoid that. So either the cars are going to be in the garage or we're going to get rid of the garage and have them on, on the pavement, which I don't think anybody down there wants to see. If I can continue with my, my questions, I'm from what we saw the, when we met last week, you had a, it shows a parcel where there used to be two structures, now there's going to be only one that's not built yet. And then you showed two cars pulling in under what I would call the basement, where the basement would be, right under the first floor. Street level. Huh? Street level garage. Street level, right. But now you're going to propose that we approve having space for three cars underneath. I suppose that's not a, an engineering problem. I thought we weren't doing the three cars now. You're not We're doing not. the three card now. But I understand what she's saying. It's confusing because it yes. says which structures. Formally, yeah. Well, it says which formally read as follows: the only structures permitted to be erected or placed upon said yeah. lot shall be one single family dwelling containing no more than four bedrooms with no more than a two car garage. The grantee okay. will not erect any buildings above premises within seven feet of any boundary line. That's what's already there, correct? In the deed. That's so, all, That's what's there. So now it reads as follows. The only structures permitted to be erected or placed upon said lot shall be no more than two single family dwellings containing no more than five bedrooms each with no more than a two car garage. So why does it still say no more than two single family dwellings? Because what you what would be created by virtue of the effort are uh, the Dunkey residence, which is a single family, and the Carpinella residence, which is going to be a single family. So but those they're not so separate. They're not separate lots. Well, this this deed restriction was put into place before they were ever divided. That's the problem. So the deed restriction goes for both lots. Correct. So I there 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 will have to be some adjustment made for a two car garage, and the got, applicant yeah, knows that. And then you're talking about the possible intrusion of the fourth vehicle or something. Now, I, I'm assuming because this is at the beach, that you, there, it's not going to have a cellar. I no. defer. I doubt it, but that's. No. Uh, Okay. No one builds cellars at the beach anymore. Well, that's what I figured. So you're just going to have a raised first floor, so you have room to put two or three cars underneath. And then you mentioned something, Mark, about the the, the remaining car would be a little bit on the on the over the property line or onto town property. Right How did you? No, we we actually hadn't gotten into uh, garages or a number of spaces, uh, we were just dealing with the forms of relief that were already asked for. Well, I'm not comfortable voting on this until I know what the final settlement is. I mean, this, this, this keeps changing before my eyes. I, I don't mean to cause a problem. We don't have anyone taking minutes right now either, so. The, the, we're on the camera's TV's running. On. Oh, it is? Oh. All right. Um, Nice Mark, this is a case where you've been working with them, right? Correct. And they've come back and done what you've asked them to do? Uh, they've come up with a slightly different solution that would seem to work if you got the extra, if you came back to this board yet again. Well, yet again. The question is whether or not you wait until they come back yet again, or can you act on the things that they've asked for so far? I'm concerned about if they're going to be parking in the right of way. I'm against it. Yeah, but that's, so would you like to address that, Peter? Um, so all the cars are going to be inside the garage. All means four cars. What happens if they park outside the garage? Are they in the right-of-way? Yes. Okay, that's where there's a problem as far as I'm concerned. But, but they're not going, but the, the, <clears throat> that's not okay. going to be parking. But are they going to hire a policeman to stay there all the time? Yeah, we're but anybody, no anybody could park, anybody could park the illegally, anyway. and they're not going to park so illegally. So we're encouraging it to be parked illegally. No, I don't think we are. Well, what? what I don't think we, we are. I think we're saying, they're saying that they came back with a plan that they'll put them in the garage, and I think, I think we give everybody a runaround like crazy, and they go from uh, one board to another board to another board to another board, and they come back. How long is the driveway? Oh, well, the driveway is 22 it, feet. Okay, and isn't the regular driveway limited to less than that ordinarily? 
I think it's 24. 24, 24 is the way. I, I think it's 24. 24. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, it does effectively take two of the spaces off that would be parking on that street. Um, is what happens there, which is the what I consider the bad thing, because it's already a street that has impossible parking situation. The same cars I'm, are parked all the time. <clears throat> I'm not, that doesn't make it right. I'm not through yet. Yes, yeah, no. Mrs. Wolseley, okay. you're on the floor. The driveway, in my mind, is a long stretch where you pull the cars in. I know this is a little different, and I'm open to that, but... Number one, that area has a problem with Mr. Dumkey apparently uh, parking in the right of way all the time. And now. That's not a problem, Mrs. Walsh. Well, if I'm told by the to neighbors. The right of I'm way. told by the Mr. neighbors that uh, this is a problem. Uh, well, uh, Mr. And Gerald, then we have uh, here. Mrs. Wolsey, please. Then uh, I'm you not, made a statement, and I'd like to find out if it's true. I, all uh, right. Are we concerned about um, Mr. Dumkey parking in the right of way where everyone is allowed to park? Uh, the side of oh, that Mr. Dumkey is on the north side. Yeah, it's not a fire lane. So people are allowed to park there. Yeah, uh, if uh, to, anybody to can park on the north there. side of what? So see, Mrs. Wilson, that's not a problem. No, anyone, the, you could go down there and park if you wanted to. No, I don't intend to. The north side of what? Second right. street. Street. The street, the whole street's that way. That's why this actually takes some Second of the parking street. away on the street because it isn't the fire lane. Second Street goes north. I thought it comes in no, off the north Ocean side Boulevard. Of Second Street. The what? North, the north side of it. So the, it goes east or west, but there's a north side and a south side. So that lot is by, hold hold up the map. Uh, sure. Would you? Pass would it you over. This is turning out to be a, okay. What's up here? That's north. Right? Correct. You okay. see the arrow These, is there on the left. East facing, there's south, there's north. Now, what, east, what's east on this lot? East, east is the other way. East is the other way, Mary Lewis. What's Those the other way? East is towards you. That's another street. No, east is towards you on that. The east is over that's, here that's on Ocean right. Boulevard. You, know, you were saying it was the other side. East is Ocean Boulevard. Yes, I'm sir. sorry. Yes. And west is over there. That's right. And what's up there? Another north. street. North. That whole thing is a street? It's no, a it's, north, it's houses. Lot. It's, it's lots. Houses. It, it's a lot. So you can't park. That's third over there. street up there, Mrs. Walsley. What? That would be third street put, up there. I'll see you. Okay. okay. Well, see. Third, wait a minute. That's the lot. I've got dotted lines here, so that's a parcel. And then I don't know. We're on another street. We're on Second Street. I know that, but if well, the person... Well, that's what we're concerned about. If the person here is parking illegally on They're Second Street... They're not parking illegally. I'm told Anybody that, can park I'm told there. that they are. But now that's you've got true. this here, and you're showing us two potent... Well, I think the, the last... The town lawyer just showed you that anybody can park you, on the right-of-way on... Because okay. it is not a fire so line. Okay. You can park there. Is anybody the, can park there. All right, but is this garage which is mostly under the new structure is this is that going to take i see these two marks here but i don't those those were uh my thoughts uh, last week yeah. and then as i said we had the meeting with the applicant where uh, their idea was something different which oh, was to move the garage uh in the other direction closer to the right of way but they they're not going to do that now they're going to put it under here like they, like it showed. Like this is this That's is the the, uh, door. the one that I sent today that, that uh, <laughs> Peter provided. So you have room for three vehicles under the building. Three. That is the front of the in house. This that you're putting That's the show. front of the house. Yes. The well, then why are you showing garages under there? They're, They're not. not. The garages are on the left. The garages on, are on the left. This? Yes. Yeah, well, the maps aren't your forte. We can see. Well, it still looks like it. I mean, it's going to go under the house. Yes. Yeah. Here, right? But you've got you're showing two. Is there room for three? There, there will be uh, 18 feet, nine by eight, three, nine by eight, nine by 18 spaces will fit in the new garage. So those are going to stack. Correct. Two cars in one bay. You got it. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Correct. So you'll have three parking spaces inside. And where's the fourth car? That they, they, they don't. There's, no, they don't have a fourth car. There's Why no do they have? No fourth car. No, no fourth car. Three cars. 
Unless uh, someone comes to visit, they might have a fourth car. Right. But that's well, I realize concern. that, but I'm talking about... So these three vehicles will be under the part of the house that faces King's Highway. No, they're no. facing 2nd right Street. right here? If faces 2nd Street. That's the side street. 2nd Street. King's Highway. No, right, but I mean, this it's at this end, but they'd come out on 2nd Street. Co correct. Okay. Huh. <laughs> And then this there's is a, a yard on the side before you get to King's This is Highway. a challenge. I just want to know what you're doing. Sure. Is there any, Peter maybe, or, or Mark, are there any stipulations for putting a garage under the house like that? Are there any problems it's common building with that? Practice. Well, people my, people my have them all over town. My house has attached to it. It's common yeah, building it's, practice. Yeah, that's the first floor of their house. People have them. You open the door, you drive your car in, you use the clicker. Okay. So how many stories are going to be above the garage area? Above, there'll be two stories. Two stories. But they're well within any height restriction or anything else, right? Not even close. There's no problem there. Okay. The thing we were dealing with was parking. They came back with a modified, they worked with Mark on it. I think we ought to approve the deed restriction and they can go on from here so they can get something done. And are you recommending that, Mark? Yes, the, the, I've been told that the, the, because of the new, they'll have to come back because it'll be a three car garage. They'll be coming back oh, okay. with, for further relief and, uh, and also with regard to setbacks because it's only 50 feet. Yeah. And because of the overhangs, they'll be within a foot of the seven feet. Foot and a half. So they'll, they'll okay. be back before us and before the Board of Adjustment, actually. Okay. So you're, real, so you're comfortable with this to take the next step? <coughs> yes. And then it will come back to us? For of the three car. Yes. Okay. I just don't want to. I move that we vote on this. I second. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. And uh, I have drafted the document so that you can sign it tonight. Mm -hmm. the, the, the document to be recorded. Oh, okay. Okay. And two, we have 907 Ocean Boulevard vote on release of deed restrictions number four, single family, four bedroom and seven foot setback restrictions. <clears throat> Thank you everyone. You can. <laughs> yes, and so uh, this one, I don't think there were the same uh, questions. Uh, and uh, basically this is to uh, enable eventual sale or marketing of the property as it is. That's correct. And so uh, I prepared a motion to that effect. I'll move that the board modify the first two sentences in the deed restriction number four and a certain quick claim deed from the town of Hampton to Norm Parsons and Bernadette J. Parsons, dated March 25th, 1985, and recorded in Rockingham County Registry of Deeds, book 2538, page 2038, which formally reads as follows. The only structures to be permitted the only structures permitted to be erected or placed upon shell on said lot shall be one single family dwelling containing no more than four bedrooms, no more than a two car garage. The guarantee shall not erect any buildings on said promise, uh, premises within seven feet of the property of any boundary line, nor shall the premises be subdivided. That same will now read as follows. The only structures permitted to be erected or placed upon said lot shall be one, two, two-family dwelling, granting no more than five bedrooms with no more than a two-car garage. The, the grantee will not erect any buildings upon the premises within the setbacks prescribed by the Z Hampton Zoning Board, except the extent to allow by the Hampton Zoning Board of Adjustment by variance. Once said variance becomes final, nor the premises shall be, nor shall the premises be subdivided. All outbuildings, sheds, and other stables, garages, shall be connected with attached dwelling to the house, stable, or garage on the lot. Said modification to be memorialized in a modified deed restriction document drafted by the town attorney for the selectman signature report. I'll second. Well, okay. Any other so, questions? Okay. Well, I just want to stipulate, so now this is the third hearing. 
Mm -hmm. this, they've had the two required public hearings. Public hearings. So and now we are we, now. We're, and we're now to the point of making vote. the final decision. Yes. I just want to clarify. Thank you. So we have a first, we have a second. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank you. I want to thank you. I know it's a special meeting and it's a busy time of the year, but thank, thank you, you for moving. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, sir. Next, we have the town manager's report. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, for those out on TV land, December 11th, 2019, which is this Wednesday, is the last day to submit petition zoning articles to the Board of Selectmen for the annual town meeting. Petition warrant articles for the annual town meeting can be submitted to the Selectmen's Office until January 14th, 2020. Thank you to the residents who observed the uh, parking restrictions during the recent storms. During storm emergencies, you may park the Ashworth parking lot at the beach. Please do not plow snow across town roads or on the sidewalks. Not only is it a violation of town ordinances, but it can also freeze, causing severe damage to plowing and clearance for both streets and sidewalks. And as of today, I was notified that the Army Corps of Engineers has finished the dredging of Hampton Harbor. Right. Oh, that's early, Great isn't news. it? It's two months early. That's what I thought. Yeah, I they, they were not the scheduled to, to uh, finish until February, and they've also done all of the optional work that was in the bid. Nice. Does that mean that it was uh, less of a problem than they thought? No, they, they uh, work 24-hour shifts. Oh. And they don't normally do that, so they doubled their time up on the, on the, uh, the harbor. Lots of coffee. Lots Fred of coffee. scared them. Mm. Well, sounds good. Um, questions for the town manager's report. Mrs. Wolsey? No. Regina? No, just excellent news about the dredging, and I uh, went out and I watched them. It's pretty, they were moving pretty quick out there. Yeah, oh, yeah. So kind of pretty to watch it. They did a great day. job, I yeah. wonder what's going on. I know. <laughs> Um, Nothing. Jim? No. Rusty? No. Okay. Thank you for your report, Fred. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Um, so why don't we go with the old business with the gentleman out here? And the reason I asked you to stay is we do not um, go back and forth with people when they come for town. You know, uh, in, in the future, we're gonna, I'm going to ask Fred about this. But in the future, if you did want to be on the agenda, you could come, and you have to come, I believe, by Wednesday night at 5 o'clock. Okay. But, Fred, what yep. can you tell us about this? Um, as I understand it, you park up against the side of your building. Correct. Okay, on um, it's Brown the, Avenue. It's, a, cor I have the it's a corner lot. The corner lot of Island Path and Brown. Right. Um, does part of your vehicle sit outside of the telephone pole? No. No? No. Well, I mean, there's eight feet from the, there to the asphalt, and then beyond that, it goes back to 11 feet. Yeah. And the pole is usually set several feet in the right of way. So the right of way may be closer to your property than you think it is. My argument to that is the fact that I bought the house in April 2002. And it was demonstrated to me by Bob Preston and the late Laurie Briard Whedon of Carlson Real Estate. And I did bring in, before I bought the, per, the property, I brought in the building inspector and told him what was going on. And it was demonstrated to me that there was a, it was two car parking, one on the side of the house and one on, in the driveway. I have maintained that corner. I make sure the hydrants cleaned out. You guys came in and put uh, a, a sidewalk right up to my foundation, right up to my foundation. The sidewalk would be on the town right of way, wouldn't it, Mr. Welch? Yes, it would. So where the sidewalk is, that land belongs to the town. Well, my suggestion is that what you do is you actually find your corners to where your I'm property is. I'm trying. I, the, the deed reads a rock in the middle of the driveway, and it's 40 feet plus or minus. Yeah, well. My argument, too, is... I have maintained that corner, and I have, it is not blocking or impeding the corner. I am set back closer than there's two porches behind me that are in, they're in that right away. Well, now, they may very well be. However, they're not movable. Without tearing the house down, they're not movable. If they are in the right of way, this board can order them to be removed by tearing them down. Okay. okay. What the Public Works Department, and what I'm only 
thinking this process out as we're talking. I understand. Here. The, the Public Works Department is telling you that you are parking within the right of way, and there's a town ordinance that says you cannot do that during the winter time. During a, is this because of a winter storm? No, this no. is because of the ordinance that says there is no parking within the public right ways of, way of a street so down the beach between well, November and April. Mr. Welch, with overnight, all due respect, overnight. all due respect, I don't Those park on the side of the house when it snows. And there's a reason. That you can't park at all there. I don't. And after the end of the storm, I have a plow. And I plow it across the street. And at the same time, I make it accessible for kids to be at the, at the corner for yeah. the bus stop. Now, in the year of 2016, 2017, when we had all that, the snow, the neighbor across the street called me and, and up in arms because I had plowed all the snow in her yard. And I was like, what? I didn't do it. The town had. And the town came down there, and they had to dig it all out. They brought in dump trucks. They brought it up to the Island Path parking lot. Mm -hmm. And I talked to the supervisor at that juncture and said, this is what I do. And I, there's not a car there. During the snowstorms, I put them in the two. I have two car parking next to me, but one of them is owned by the part-time neighbor. He's a, owns the house, but I have it plowed out, and then I put the car back over there. That's it's, not what I'm talking about. I I understand, but between the hours of 1 a.m. and 7 a.m., you're not allowed to park there at night during the winter time. That's fine. Any at any time, okay? Okay. That's 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 the ordinance. I can't tell you otherwise because that's but, it. But I don't understand why I've been there for 19 years without one parking ticket. Not, I have never been approached about this issue until I went and fixed, I physically fixed my my foundation because they put in storm drains on on Brown Ave when they redid Brown Ave. Now I dealt with Zoppo for a long time down there. But they came in and they put all their storm drains on the other side of the street. The water was running down inside my foundation. And I, and I ended up fixing it on my own this year. And this is when October 3rd when there was a problem because my truck was out there blocking the holes so people wouldn't fall down inside you know, while we were repairing this. And I actually went out at 7.30 in the morning when they started fixing the storm drain across the street. Now, I understand if there was storm drains and this and that on my side of the street, and I was impeding them. But between the porches and that telephone pole, that car is well within the asphalt. It is 16 inches between the house and the, and the asphalt. And it's been that way for 19 mm -hmm. years. And now suddenly, I'm getting told that I can't park there anymore. Mm. Furthermore, the town just reassessed me at $30,000 okay, more. Wait a minute. But we're going to have to stop this here. Mr. Welch, yeah. do you want to give him a recommendation what he should do? My recommendation would be that you find your corner markers. Ah. And that you park outside of those corner markers. There's no grandfather and there's no, no nothing not that the tells me that I've been parking there for so no. long without an issue? You can't take public property under the law in New Hampshire. You I can't, can't take, take public it. property by squatting on it, so to speak. I'm, yeah. But uh, that's not my premise. My premise is I was sold the property. Yeah, that's under you, the need to know your boundaries are. you need to go to a lawyer about that. You need to, you need to find your boundaries, part. which is the answer to the question. There's no way that we something. can basically help you here tonight without having more information. Well, that's Regina? true. If you find your boundaries, we may be able to help you. Okay. Regina, that's important. I spoke with uh, the police chief about this. Yes. And... He told me that, and I we originally thought that he was going to be here tonight, but he's not here. Correct. So I've had this conversation with him already. Um, so he received a letter from Public Works. Correct. And that is why the police department went down there. Right. And I think Hobbs came down over to your house. I mean, he left a business card. And I talked to the chief the other day on the phone, and like he said, for right now, until this can get figured out, you know, you have the resident sticker, park in the I'm, island path lot if you need a spot. Okay. And, um, you know, you have can the I, sticker. So can that I, I, I can, I, I will do that, I, but I do have one problem. I, I 
had L5C1 back fusion, and you guys don't par and you don't plow the sidewalks down at the beach. So now I'm got to walk down the middle of the road in snowstorms. I mean. The town has not provided the equipment to do those sidewalks. That's part of the problem. Didn't they just get the new plow? We have to have something to pick up. The only place you have to, when you look at the beach and you look at the sidewalks, the only place you have to plow the snow is back out in the street. Yeah. They don't plow the sidewalks anywhere, so we're not going to bring that up right now. So, no, no. Mrs. Okay. Woolsey? Yes. How, how come it took so long to tell this gentleman that he couldn't park there? I can't answer that question. Something oh. something caused it to happen. I, but and that's I, why I'm we don't have enough information right. to make any decisions. But the best thing to do is come in and Fred's office if you need any information there about okay. the law, or you can check with Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, you could. I'm going to talk to Mr. Jacobs yeah, about it. After and you've got some more information, like what Fred suggested, uh, you could ask to be on the agenda, and we could see what okay. we can do but we have to have the information in front of us before we can make a decision i just spent 30 grand to fix yeah. my foundation after yeah. i and you guys did put your sidewalk right against my house mm -hmm. and it collapsed my did front you complain walls. about that any any of this at the time because you were given not at this time no i took uh, I, I mean I, were you there when zappo was there Oh, yeah. they would have oh I had problems with them. Supposedly. I had a lot of problems with them. They severed my sewer line on a Christmas yeah. Eve. Oh, God. I had boiler, the boiler place in, my, in that front because they wouldn't fix the ledge that was in front for a long time. Yeah. I, I used to go out there with a shovel and stone and throw it underneath the boiler place to stop them from rattling oh, all God. night. That would have been a good time for you to come in and talk at the boiler place. Like the yeah. problem being that over time, yeah. my my foundation wall collapsed, and instead of tearing up the sidewalks and doing all that damage to the front during the summer, I actually built a new wall behind oh the original, mm -hmm. so that it, I wouldn't have to disturb anything in front of the house. Mm -hmm. I've done painstaking things to make sure, and I have video that can show. Yeah, but yeah. I I don't want it to go to that point. I, I just wanted to be able to well, observe, we to observe the no the parking on, on the, on the snow bands yeah. and be able to park there as a site. You guys just jacked me up. $30,000 in assessed value. Yeah. My, well, I, my taxes went up. I, I understand what that. What you need to do is you need to go in and work it out in the office. Maybe uh, talk to either Fred or uh, uh, Jamie, the assistant town manager, and try to get it in what you need the information that we need. We need to get information from Chris, stuff like that, okay. um, that we have it before us, because we really don't have any of that information. True. And I just know. for your own information, there's a lot of people in Hampton that have stories that it just isn't fair either. Okay. I, I, I understand that. I've just been quiet. No. I've been quiet. I spent $30,000 fixing my house this year. I know. We all and have. A lot of us have, and this is it's unfortunate. The, the biggest part is you, you, you have to make sure you know where your boundaries are. Yeah. That's understand. where you need to start. Before you right. buy the house. So you know where what where your property is. Because technically if the if the town put the sidewalk there, yeah. they put that on town property. Mm -hmm. And they're and very so sure. Maybe of that. your town maybe your house comes right up to the town property. It may. And if it does, then that's right. on you as a property owner because of that. So I um, agree, but and, and the it, town lines to are that, off everywhere. To the extent, the I bought that house. Yeah. And the premise with, as I said, Bob Preston has yeah. been around for a long. I don't even know if he's still. But see, alive. That, again, but that's something that you need to do in a civically. You know, we, you know, right. it's a civil matter. Can so he go see Jason Bashan in planning? He can go see plans. whoever he wants, but we no, need I mean, more information here before we can deal with this. Not a problem. That's okay. the only, my only thing is is to see. It's like a discovery meeting. Yeah. You know, yep. can yeah. we just. Dis Discuss it. Well, don't be afraid to come in and talk at the town hall. They can help you. There's all kinds of people. The this, town scares, planner, this scares the hell out of me right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay? I just, I'm not this type of person. I, yeah. I, to myself and everything else, and it, it just really floored me. Well, when we I thank got you it. for coming in tonight. I appreciate and you well, guys. We, and it, you tonight, guys we don't usually do, but we Thank you so it. much for listening, okay. and I'll do whatever recommendations. And, okay, and, well, thank uh, you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. Bye now. Um, Thanks, Andrew. The. Uh
Next, under old business, we have Warren articles. We gotta take fire. The fire grant. Oh, I want sure. to move back to the fire grant. Yes. Yeah, while he's here. Yeah. Yep. Get him while he's hot. I didn't see him come in. He, he came in quietly. Sure. Here, Jamie will help you. Welcome. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I'm here uh, tonight just to get a couple of signatures for the uh, SAMHSA grant that we've applied for. It's in process right Chief, now. Chief, why don't you come up while he's here too? Since we won't say you're we won't say you're late. We, we started, started at six. six. A lot of people. Oh, I thought it was seven. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people might have missed it. A lot of you guys did. Yeah, the TV guys missed it too. I do we apologize. Had, this was a special meeting, not just so it started at six. So apologize for that. Uh, thanks for squeezing us in to the agenda tonight. Uh, like I said, this is part of um, the process for the approval for the SAMHSA grant that we applied for for the opioid overdose leave behind kit program that we're going to initiate uh, beginning 2020. Um, they're requiring a majority of the board of selectmen to sign off on this. This, this is the signature page and then initial uh, all three pages of where it's highlighted if you'd be so inclined. Do, Do you have any questions about the uh, program we can answer? I would. Yeah. Okay, does someone have a motion? I have questions. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Mrs. Wolsey? Uh, Mason, on the grant award financial requirements, she, I think you were referring, only mine doesn't have yellow. It says, please fill out the below information to inform the division of your most recent audit status of your organization or agency. And it says Hampton Fire Rescue expended 750000 or more in federal funds. And you checked no. What relevance does that have to what we're doing? Uh, those financial disclosures we're going to be working on with Christy to get all of the, uh, the audits that need to be done and, and shown to the... But does uh, that mean that that will then change that to yes? I mean, it's showing no on the... The total we didn't, amount we didn't receive seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of federal aid this past year, so unfortunately no. It was an answer to, like a to a question that that's why we checked no on that and then oh, okay. I'll be working with Christy to, to pull sure together the not. audits that are appropriate for the grant. Because it looked a little strange. Okay. Now is the rest gonna be filled in? The audit period and grant so you're waiting to do all that with Christy, right? Correct. So are we premature in doing this, or what? No, the audit's just been finished. It, run, it ran from last year. For, okay. So that, that can be entered. That's not a problem. Okay. They already have a copy of last year's audit as well, yep. so this is just completing some paperwork. So this will all be filled out by Christie right. when we approve it? Correct. Okay. And, and what specific motion do we make? Do we move to... Um, we have another question, I believe. Um, Regina? Yeah, this is for to get nalox naloxone. Naloxone, yes, ma'am. So, and it keeps talking about the program. What is... Can you explain exactly what... I mean, I think I know, but I'm not sure. So this is so that people that have a tendency or these will be provided to certain, maybe certain areas or certain homes. Is that what these kits... So the specific program that we are are interested in uh, starting is a leave behind program. So if we respond to a home or residence for a suspected overdose, uh -huh. we can leave behind a kit that does include Narcan, it includes gloves, a barrier device for mouth to mouth uh, resuscitation, and then more importantly, some resources that the individual or the family can contact and utilize uh, for recovery services, as well as some local information uh, we're going to provide CPR training to anybody that's interested in receiving that. So, so what was the drug that you just asked about, though? The, how do you that say that? That's <laughs> naloxone. That is Narcan. It's, oh, so that's just it's another one in the same. Yeah. 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 And this has been tailored for Hampton specifically in your fire department, right? You guys have worked that out. That this isn't just like a generic program. It'll all be customized. The information in the, in the in the kits will all have our contact information on it as well as some local resources in the state 211 program. Jim, do you have questions? No, they've explained Rusty. it very well. I'm all set. Thank you. Forms. Mrs. Wolseley? Yeah, the last one. Does this apply to vaping and all that crazy stuff? This is specific to opioids, but there are uh, contact information. There's resources that people can utilize for 
uh, other addictions uh, such as alcohol, oh. but not specifically vaping. Vaping is not for an overdose. Oh, well, okay. All right. Okay. Did we have a, a motion? I thought we had one. Did we? The, who was the I'll, I'll first make the motion. and the second? All those in and favor? And so we'll, we'll know. It says do not, um, you know, start. Do, this does not mean your grant has been awarded. Do not start your program. So you'll tell us when you get the grant awarded. It has to, from here it goes to a governor council so that it's at least six weeks out. So we're looking at okay. the beginning of 2020. Anyway, so you'll so. get back to us eventually. All those in favor? Okay. Unanimous. Thank you very Can much. you have the forms we have to sign? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Mr. Welch, what about you? Okay. We, uh, hopefully you're going to approve. Oh, man, I was actually uh, <laughs> on the street. Should I, we I go thought this began one by one. I think that's the... We no, we... Uh, that hours would be appropriate. This is a special meeting, so we just started at 6 instead of 7. There, was a, there weren't going to be other things on the, uh, at the but time. Things it good. was done last week, and evidently everyone didn't get the memo. Just got the right mind to answer questions for sure, so... Yeah. These two didn't come in with needles today. Where? On the back side. I don't have my list. I don't believe it. Yeah, they make sure. That's all. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. List of the warrant articles. He's looking for warrant, oh, warrant articles. Oh, warrant articles. You should have a copy of the warrant. It was in your packet. For this? For the? The copy of the Warren Articles. Uh, so this will go in a Warren article? Is that yeah. what we're saying? No. Well, what are I we know. looking for? Just wait a minute, Mrs. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Can get you my yeah, mine's not here. Okay. okay. Did you, you have? You got to sign the top one and then initial all, both sides. This is one here, here, right? No, no. Right. This one. Yeah, that one. <laughs> There's like six pages of where you need to put initials in one of these spots here. Just flip the pages over and keep on okay. going. <laughs> on the back of the first page, too. It's a test to see how confused you can possibly become. <laughs> uh, we can do a good job at that. <laughs> there. Thank you, Thank you very you much. Know. Thanks for coming Let's in. Let's make tonight. sure they're all signed. Did you have anything else you wanted to mention? Is there <laughs> a moment here? Do we have here? to sign anything? Well, sir, I think that you're doing a great job. I only need three. There are only three. Oh, okay. I just asked for three. All right. Perfect. I'm just checking. Okay. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Good, good, good. Um, Thank, you. Thank you, gentlemen. Do you want to move on to the Virginia? Or? Yeah, we'll do that. Well, Mark's Move. upstairs getting you something. Yeah. Move on yeah. what? The, the USS Virginia. Uh, Under yeah. new business. Um, vote to allow USS Virginia Committee under RSA 31 colon 95B to accept gifts and donations. I would be happy yeah. to move that independently. Second. We have a first. We have a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Good. 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 And, um, Here comes Mark. The parking and survey. Maybe the list was updated. Uh oh. <laughs> so we've got this right. So. Hmm. Every time Mark comes in with papers, I'm nervous. Fred, these are the ones that we already talked about last time? Yes, what? sir, it is. So yep. do we just need to have a vote on these? Is that what it is? Uh, you need to instruct me to send them to the budget committee. Sorry, okay. Fred, I think my list. Uh, yeah, take mine. Around. It's the only one I got. But are, are we 
voting on our recommendations no. tonight? No. 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 Not on your recommendation to be printed in the warrant. No. Okay. No, we're just moving them to the budget committee, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, yeah. so do we need to go over the ones from the planning board? No, we don't. No, we don't. Articles okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 12. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. The first I item is item number, number 12. Uh, number 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So number 12 is to vote to transfer the authority of the cemetery trustees. Shall we discontinue the board of C cemetery trustees by delegating their duties and responsibilities to the town manager? So uh, do we are asking if we want to move this forward to the, to the warrant. warrant. Right. So moved. I'll second it. All those in favor of moving it to the warrant? I thought we were just moving these to the budget committee. Well, well, this one will go to the warrant because there's no money attached to it. This is a question asked by the board, the board of cemetery trustees. Okay. So. Uh, I'm okay with that. Okay, so we have a first and a second. All those in favor of moving this to the warrant? We have, it's unanimous. Mm -hmm. So number 12 is yes. That'd be the same with 13, too, because that's not a money article. That's the sports yeah. betting. That sports betting is not a money article that um, would go on the, on the ballot. Yeah, and we're, but aren't we going to discuss that next week? We're going to have public hearings on that. Next so skip week. over that yeah. if you'd like. Yeah. Okay, so okay. number 13, we are going to skip over that. Um, number 14 is elderly exemptions. Um, that's... This would ratchet the elderly exemptions in accordance with the increase of 12% in the equalized valuation of the town. Right. So and this we've been is doing this uh, each time we have a reval so that those on elderly exemption uh, keep pace with the, with the valuation of the town. And this doesn't go to the budget committee either, right? No, it does not. No. No. So all those, do someone want to make a motion? I'll make the motion. We move this to we the We have a first. We have a second. All those in favor? And That's pretty much we have four, right. Regina. Yeah, money's involved. I'm going to be waiting until I receive all uh, warrant articles before I vote on them. Okay. So you're uh, uh, not voting. Okay. Fifteen is the budget committee's warrant article. That's for the budget. Sixteen, uh, fifteen, and sixteen are the collective bargaining <laughs> items. You do not have those yet. Right. Uh, Excuse me, 17, 17 and 18. is 17. collective bargaining. 16. 18 is lock road sewer and drainage system replacement. Right. We don't have that information. Well, you do, and and you voted at your last meeting to uh, to accept the premise of the article. Uh, it's been through council. Uh, council has refined the the language of the article. It would rebuild lock road sewer, the drainage system, and the street. The cost is eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay, so are we, we're looking for a, um, a motion to move that? I move that we move it to, move to the budget committee. committee. Yeah. And is there a second? Rusty, first and a second. All those in favor of moving to the budget committee? We have three and two abstaining, I guess. Okay, so uh, you're just not going to vote for it? In, Future. I'm not voting on the warrant article on any money well, warrant articles. Well, you don't vote on a lot of things. You have seen until a lot. I uh, see all so of the another warrant extension articles, from Regina. the whole picture I want to see, like I've tried but, to explain to okay, this. Okay, then board what before. are we doing here tonight? But th this is Virginia. Just this is just a, it's not. It's our, money in it. I'm not voting on it until I know what all the money is going to be. Okay, so is this? A, we should we not even bother? Well, well, Regina well, likes. We have to move into the budget. Yeah, you know, this, you only need yeah. three votes, right? Well, budget, yeah, but, you know, budget committee has requested them. They've only got two more meetings this right, month. Right. Right. And, you know, you're the one that likes to say you represent all of the citizens. You represent yeah. no one when you abstain, Regina. I just yep, want to I'm going to vote clear. on them when I see the whole picture. Okay. Because I asked well, about one account vote. I don't see today. that. I don't see I'm, collective what, what bargaining. That? I don't see trash warrant articles. When, when account, I have the whole okay. thing, then I'll vote. When a current road will not be a warrant article. We don't have $5.5 million to fix it. Okay, so we're doing a lot here tonight, and you're abstaining, but you abstain all the time, so it's not really a problem. Why don't we just move on and do Move on. Do. Um, so, 18, are we moving it forward yeah. or not? Yes. 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 The budget committee? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And 19 is the highway block grant. I make a motion we move that to the budget committee. Second. All those in favor? 
Uh, and we have, I'll go with we, the, okay, we have four the, okay. and another extension, and this isn't going to change, so you're not representing the people again on 19 Regina. Right, not done reviewing. Well, we may not be going back to review it just for you again. Oh, well, we can do it just for you when you're away? You're well, uh, Fine, then I won't have my, my vote on all your, However you want, Regina. But when you don't vote, you don't represent anybody. I'm not ready to Number vote. 20 you just is said public we're setting works up to the budget committee, not equipment. voting. So make up your mind what we're doing. I'll make a motion and we move it to the budget You're the one that's doing nothing. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. I mean, uh, three. What's yours? I'm going to hold Hosey? on this one. So it's moved to the. This is Article 20, right? Yes. Correct. Thank okay. you. 21 Road Capital Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund. I'll, add, I'll move that one because that's cut and dry. So some you do and some you don't. I'll second it. All those in favor? Four and another exemption for Regina. I don't think it's necessary. You don't, but I do. Article 22. <clears throat> Number Article 22 is flood control designs. I'll move that to the budget committee. I'll second. But just quite, is this part of what that grant we got the other day? Right. Yes. This yes. is all part of that. Yes, well, and it's, it's going to lead part. up to another two hundred thousand dollar grant. Right. Thank you. It's like the magic part. All those in favor? I have a quick question. Yeah. If I may. Um, the planning board is allowing people to put property in wetlands up on stilts or whatever. Uh, I think we need to really focus on. Uh, you're talking about protecting streets and whatever, but I think we could be a little more specific. I think it's very dangerous to continue to allow properties that are being constantly flooded out and just allowing them that's to. That's why they put them on stilts. The well, I know, to. but that's, that's not their prerogative. That's not it's a solution. A, it's a, well, it's we're the talking, national standard. We're talking about a specific Warren article for a study. Yes. I realize that. that okay. All those in favor of moving it forward? So that means you're voting against it? Yeah, I'm going to vote against it. So we have three, one against, and Regina doesn't vote again. So that is 23, is intersection, sidewalk, and traffic light improvements, High Street and Mill Road. I'll move that to the Budget Committee. I'll second it, and I'll just say part of this was under the safe school. Safe route to schools. This is what come up of it. Under that, was it, it did originally come from there, but there's no money available from the state for that program, so right. it would be up uh, from the town. But this will allow us to have crosswalks and and ped lights and stuff on that intersection. The now, the intent here is to have um, proper walkways and uh, pedestrian crossing lights at this location. Correct. Thank you. Which okay. is right next to school. So all those in favor. We have four, and is that an exemption, or are you against it, Regina? I'm not voting. You can call it whatever you okay, want. Okay, so 24, another exemption for Regina, or 23. 24 is side and rear loading refuge and recycling trucks. And Fred, just so it's Sir? clear, this is what we talked about last week when, when they came in originally wanted the one mm -hmm. side on one and they talk about the need for the real loading packer and so we've done both of those on on five year is it five year leases I five year lease purchase yes so that uh, so that we can replace the two trucks that we do need mm -hmm. yes. uh, I'll read that shall the town of Hampton vote to author authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into a five-year lease purchase agreement for one Mac truck Mac cab over refuge and recycling truck with a Libri automated two-sided loader body unit in an amount of $350,395, including interest. The yearly payment being $75,500 and one MAC 16-yard rear loading refuge and recycling truck in the amount of $237,090. The monthly payment being $51,000, including interest and to raise and appropriate the sum of 126000 $500 to fund said purchase agreement in year one 
and said purchase agreement to contain a non-appropriation clause. So, do you move that? Oh, what's that? Do you move that, right? Yeah, I'll move that, yeah. <laughs> I second it. Okay, we have a first and a second. All those in favor? And are you against? I'm, I'm going to hold on this one. Okay. So, what does that mean? You're against? I'm not, you, I'm not going to. Abstain. I'm going okay, to abstain. Okay, and Regina's abstaining again. Even though they can vote on these afterwards, mm -hmm. but if they don't like it, because if nothing's going to change. We're going to have more, right? More articles. More what? Trash warrant articles, collective well, bargaining. Well, these are the ones yes. we're going over right now. Yeah. We're going to be having a further discussion. But all of these prices, when uh, the, the, the amounts of money that are put in here, if you don't agree afterwards, you get to vote whether you don't want it which that's a whole separate thing, what we're going to be doing. That's a, what we call our final review. Yeah, so this isn't right. a final review. This is just, just moving to move it, it forward. On to the so this isn't committee. your time to say, no, you don't want it. I'm not saying I don't want it. It's okay. not well, what I'm saying at all. You just aren't participating in this part of the meeting. Right. Mrs. Wolves. I'll move exactly. Article 25, the Human Service Agencies. It. That's fixed. All those in favor? And that one's not going to change either, Regina. Article 26 is Recreation Infrastructure Special Revenue Fund. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate $126,200 for the following purposes of the Park and Recreation Department to purchase playground equipment, to replace old broken equipment for the library, playground $35,000, Skateboard park renovations and concrete work, 20,000. Landscape tree and invasive growth removal at Lou Brown Park. Skateboard park, Eaton Park and Tuck Park, 20,000. Laser grading at Eaton Park to make safer conditions, 20,000. Tennis courts and online rink surface crack Inline. repairs, 9,500. Recreation equipment maintenance, 4,000. Recreation playground maintenance, 1,000. General building repairs, 3,000. Skateboard park maintenance, 2,500. Shed repairs, roof cleaning and new doors for the cave building, 6,700. Replace two parks, garage, overhead doors, 4,500. All as determined by the Board of Selectmen, the town manager and the Director of Parks and Recreation, and to authorize the withdrawal of $126,700 for the Recreation Re recreation Infrastructure Special Revenue Fund established for these purposes under Article 44 of the 2007 Annual Town Meeting. Mr. Chairman, I'll move that we approve that. Uh, I would like to ask a question about it. Now, um, in the past, how much of this um, money has gone to the state back, uh, uh, park. Have we put other town monies in the state park? We don't. Park? We don't. We don't expend any money on state property. Skateboard. Skateboard. Park. Park. Oh, park. skateboard. Park. Because in the past, this was all done by volunteers, raising private private funds, I believe. Yeah, a lot of the work has been, but there, there has to be ongoing maintenance, and, and it's been deferred for a couple of years. So, but have we done this period? so far. I can't answer that question. Okay, can you check on that? Yeah. Because I won't be voting for it until I find that out. All right, well, I move, the, I move that we move it to the Budget Committee so they can discuss mm -hmm. it. Okay, and uh, a second. second. We have a first and a second. I already moved it, but yeah. that's all right. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, all those in favor? Three, and I'll abstain from this one because that, as far as I'm concerned, I'd like to know the answer to that. Yeah, I'll find that out for you. Um, Article 27 is the Police Forfeiture Special Revenue Fund, which is uh, an existing. I'll read it, Mrs. Wolseley. It just says it's uh, existing. Uh, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $90,000 to carry out all lawful functions under federal, state, and local criminal justice forfeiture programs and to authorize the withdrawal of said sum of $90,000 from the Police Forfeiture Special Revenue Fund 
created for that purpose under Article 55 of the 2003 town meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? One extension. Article 28, Public Works Building Modifications. So the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $85,000 for the purpose of interior building improvements at DPW main offices. Improvements include the installation of an air filter filtration system within the main office to filter fumes and other airborne particles from entering the existing office space. It also includes the renovation of the existing bedroom, kitchen, bedroom, meeting area to provide separation of the existing spaces to be able to facilitate. <laughs> what? Bathroom. You said bedroom. Oh, I meant that. <laughs> Nobody's sleeping down there. I did think there. that was kind of odd. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> they probably should during the snowstorm. Uh, yeah, really. <laughs> Facilitate meetings at the DPW office to provide a location to have breaks and meals that doesn't double as a meeting space and bathroom entrance, and to update the bathroom for unisex use. Set sum of $85,000 to come from the unassigned fund balance this shall be non-lapsing appropriation per SR, RSA 32 colon 7 uh, 6 and shall not lapse until the purpose is completed by March 31st, 2023, whichever is sooner. I'll move that. I'll second. It's a UFB. It's already money already there. All those in favor? Four and one abstention. Article 29, Transfer Station Improvements Feasibility Study. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 to conduct a Transfer Station Improvements Feasibility Study to balance the changing rubbish and recycling markets as well as current operations. The facility will require modifications to be able to address the needs to segregate materials, improve internal operations and make building modifications and research alternatives for disposal. The study shall provide recommendations to facilitate immediate improvements such as the purchasing of storage trailers, dumping containers, earthwork, and provide planning level designs and costs for future appropriation requests. Said sum of $50,000 to come from the unassigned fund balance. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation by RSA 32 semicolon 7, 6, and shall not lapse until the purpose is completed or by March 31st, 2024, whichever is sooner. I'll move that. I'll second. That's a UFV again. The money's already yeah, there. The money's already there, and I just want people to know this is, this is for the feasibility study. This is not for the recommendations that were put forth by the... Um, the trash committee that we should be getting those by next week, maybe? Could be. I think so. Okay, thank you. So we're going to have that on the agenda for next week? Well, if it's ready. Yeah, because many of these things, I plan on voting against them if we don't have the, all of the information that we should be having. All those in favor? For and one against. Cemetery. I'm not against. I'm not voting. Removal. Not voting. Yeah. Cemetery tree removal. <clears throat> Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 for the purpose of removing trees from the High Street Cemetery in order to protect gravesites, gravestones, and abutting properties and rare roadways. Such sum to be used by the tree warden to, re to contract for the removal of trees mm -hmm. and for the restoration of said cemetery caused by such removal and to authorize the tree warn, warden in consultation with the Board of Selectmen, town manager, and the appropriate appropriation through the withdrawal of $50,000 from the principal in the Cemetery Burial Trust Fund, which okay. has a principal balance of more than $500,000 generated from the sale of cemetery burial plots. I'll move that. I'll second, and that is an existing trust fund that will be. And just so know, if you, uh, uh, you know, I, I wholeheartedly agree with this. If you go through the cemetery with the past snowstorm we had and look at the damage that's yeah. already a lot of there, trees there, down. Yeah. A lot of trees came down with this past snowstorm, so this is stuff we have to get done. Pine trees. This, Pine trees, yes. This was neglected. And maple years. trees. And maples, I didn't. Yeah. yeah. Do you mind? Not at all. Okay, so, so um, all those in favor? 
four and one abstention. 31. Okay, this is, uh, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $40,000 to replace and equip a new vehicle for the fire prevention officer. This vehicle is utilized by fire prevention officer to attend meetings at various sites, conduct on-site inspections, and to respond to fires to investigate their origin and cause. The vehicle carries all necessary tools to perform the work of the fire prevention officers, as well as his firefighter's turnout gear. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 colon 7 Roman 6 and shall not lapse until the purpose is completed or by March 31, 2021, whichever is sooner. I'll move. I'll second. I have a question. Yes. Um, it doesn't mention anything about what is going to happen with the existing vehicle. And I really like to see that in there. Uh, where you say this, the existing vehicle will be traded in or sold for scrap or whatever. Is that something that's going to happen, Mr. Walsh? Yes, or, it is. Yeah. What? Okay. We don't keep these vehicles. Well, that's what I'm saying. But I, I like to see it in the article in print so people know that we're not just loading up on on the old vehicles. Um, is, is I thought this went to the state and they decide how it ultimately reads. No. no? No, we do. Yeah, we just do. So, what? What's your? If you want to change it, if you want to change it, then you can either vote on it. We'll change it tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, to to ref reflect that, or you can just take it off the list at this so point in time. I'll I make I'll make an amendment that we uh, add to it to be traded or sold if deemed prudent correct. by the fire department, the town manager, or, and the board of select. Yeah, excellent. I'll second that. That's why I make a statement. I think it's stupid. They do it anyways. We just add word, adding words to these worn articles. We have it in Article 32 for the building they, structure. They do anyways. It's just stupidity, but let's do okay. it. Okay, so we have a first. We have a second. All those in favor, four and one abstention. Um, article 32, replace building inspector vehicle. Shall the town of Hampton vote to mm -hmm. raise and appropriate the sum of $24,500 to purchase a Chevrolet Colorado pickup truck equipped with a two-way radio for the building department with the replaced unit, a 2012 pickup truck, to be traded in or sold if deemed to be prudent by the building inspector, the town manager, and the board of selectmen. Yeah. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 colon 7 Roman 6 and shall not lapse until the purchase is completed or by March 31, 2021, whichever is sooner. I'll move it. I'll second. Let's All see. those in favor? We have four in favor and one abstention. It has my favorite line in there. Next, we Pretty have reserved. fire turnout gear, Article 33. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $27,500 to be added to the firefighters' turnout gear capital reserve fund created under Article 17 of the 2019 our annual town meeting in accordance with the provisions of RSA 35 with the sum of $27,500 to come from the unassigned fund balance. Excellent. This is a, a fund that we have created. I move it. Necessary. I'll second. So, and it first, does have. Do we the, have a second. All those in favor? It does have the UFB. Four and one abstention. Yeah. Article 34 Household Hazardous Waste Collections. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000? for the purpose of conducting two household hazardous waste collection days during calendar year 2020 and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to permit the towns of Newcastle and Hampton Falls to participate in said collection days at their own expense and to apply for, accept, and expend for such purpose any funds from the State of New Hampshire, the federal government, and any private source as may be made available. I'll move it. Second. All those in favor? We have four and one abstention. Next, we have the conservation fund. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 to be placed in the Hampton, Hampton Conservation Commission Fund? This fund to be used to acquire, maintain, improve, protect, or limit the future use of or otherwise conserve and properly utilize open spaces and conservation easements in Hampton in accordance with RSA 36 hyphen capital A section one section one through four inclusive. Any um, motion for that? I'll move it. And 
I'll second it. I'm going to abstain on this because it doesn't show what's in the current fund, or is this a new fund? I can't tell. It's the, it's the existing fund. Yeah, I think we should be we should see in that article okay. uh, what is currently in the fund, like the cemetery trust fund. So are you looking to make a motion that that no. be done? He, he moved. Oh, Jim, Jim no. Moved. He, she wants something to read differently. She wants to read differently. So can, oh, well, can we hold this one off, Fred, so that sure. we can? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we'll just I don't hold mind that doing that. Off. I think it should be there for the That's information of the public. Article 36 is to dis discontinue the capital reserve fund. Shall the town vote to discontinue and close the Department of Public Works Equipment Capital Reserve Fund created under Article 23 of the 2008 Annual Town Meeting with any remaining balance to be transferred to the town's general fund to be used to reduce property taxes? Once I will move this with the stipulation that the, the balance that is there as of uh, March, whatever, uh, be incorporated in this article as well so the public can see what's there. I'll second that. Okay, so we have a that's one motion to that she wants to add that. Is that what you're seconding? Yep. Jim? Yes, yeah, and uh, so we'll vote on that <laughs> first. All those in favor of that. Uh, four and one abstention. This doesn't have to go to the bu budget committee anyways, I don't believe, does it? No, it doesn't. No, no. it's just no. a matter of information. It's a matter of information. So. Yeah. Okay. We actually People won't know what's in that account come March. Well, we'll know at the end of the year. But we can know an approximate yeah. of right. what the end yeah. of the year yeah. is. Yeah, the end of the year figure should be. We'll, we'll know the end of the and year. And then we, so th did we want, do we have an, um, a motion to move that forward? I'll make a motion to move it forward. I thought I made a motion. Well, that's what no, she made a motion to include it. something different to make it an amendment. Okay. Yeah. Well, so, so we have a first. So we have a second. So you're moving. And we're moving as amended. Yes. 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 Correct. Okay. All those in favor? Four and one abstention. Yeah. This next one I don't think goes in front of the budget committee. It's the heritage no. commission. No. It does not. No. So we have the. Uh, uh, but we can still send it. Yes, you would. Yeah. 37 um, doesn't apply to so the... So it's the heritage. I can read this one. Yeah. Okay. Shall the town of Hampton vote to amend the membership comp um, composition of the Heritage Commission established under Article 45 of the 2019 Annual Town Meeting in the portion of said Article 45 beginning, as provided in RSA 673, colon 4-a, by amending Section 1, B to read one of the regular member of the Heritage Commission shall be a member of the Board of Selectmen and by amending the amending section 1 C to read one regular member of the Heritage Commission shall be a member of the Planning Board. This amendment is required for the membership of the Commission to come in compliance with the requirements of RSA 6673 colon 4-small a to majority vote required. So moved. No second. All those in favor? I'll vote for this one. We have five. To the RSA. Everyone um, voted on this one. There and is already a forward. Board of Selectmen member on the Heritage Commission. We have, we have the required number of members even though the uh, the warrant article said two selectmen and two members of the planning board, and the statute says one of each. Right. So it already right. complies. So we this just don't just want it to be wrong put later. Put a planning board member yeah. on. Mm -hmm. Right. So the Article 38 is uh, the that's Christmas a parade, article. and that's a petition article. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to read okay. it. Well, are we, are we, we, we can move that forward. We can move that forward. It's, yeah. it's got to go anyhow. It's that's right. Anyway. On petition of Kristen Russell. We don't have least. the petition yet. <laughs> Yes, we do. Uh, yes, we do. For yep. next year's Christmas yep. parade? On petition of Kristen Russell, at least 25 <laughs> Hampton registered voters wow. shall the town of Hampton vote to raise appropriate the sum of $3,000 to pay Experience Hampton, Inc., the organizer of the 2019 to the 2020. 2019, yeah. Should be 20, oh, uh, this is the, the number of years they've done. Oh, okay. 2010 to the organizer of the 2010 to the 2019 Christmas parades. Okay, to help defray the, 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 yeah. the expenses of the, two, the, the 2020 Christmas parade and relative activities. I'll make that motion. I'll, I'll second. second. That's oh, all I'll I'll second it. 
Uh, we have a unanimous vote. Regina voted on that okay. one too. So those can be moved to the budget committee for the yes. month. Yes. Just like that. They, they, all we did was move these to the budget committee, right? Right. Then the budget committee gets a, a, a shot at them. And then they back, come back to we have a final and review. And then we have a we review. We all get a choice when we see the final plans. Okay. Yes. This all right. is the way we do it every year. Okay. And we're not going to change it unless someone makes uh, some. Okay. Uh, and I just one more one more statement. I was wrong to say what Mary Louise said was stupid. I was wrong to say that, so okay. I okay. apologize. Um. So. I can disagree, but I shouldn't say stupid. <laughs> you can say obnoxious. No, <laughs> fine. Next, we move. No. Does anyone ha have any other old business? I look to make you laugh, Chris. Seeing none, we will move to new business. Uh, number two is Hampton Business Community Parking Survey. Um, now, Rusty, you brought this up, so would you like to uh, yeah, I did expand not. on it? Um, and I've looked over some of their stuff. and. And, and a number of the people say leave it the way it is, the way it is yeah. which a majority of those spaces are one hour um, but the the big question is how are we going to enforce it uh, and that's <laughs> and that's we, we need to have some enforcement so I was hoping that the uh, police chief was going to be here so that we could, we could talk about that it's also talking about better signage for the municipal lot and I agree a lot of people agreed, a lot of people agreed with that and yeah. I and, and I've talked to a number of the businesses downtown and uh, they they want to get together as a group and talk about how can they better make signage for downtown. And oh. now's a great time to do it with the, the, the road. Get, oh, yeah. Well, that it's off season a little bit for them, but also when we're getting ready to put the, the new pavement and the new curbing yeah. and the new signage in, yeah. now's the best time to do it. So uh, I'm hearing from a lot of them, they want to they wanna be part of that solution. Well, why don't they do it on their own and then bring it forward? Because I think for us to start, uh, set another commission when we oh, have and, times and this time when it isn't working this year. I, I agree. I we don't have. We another don't need another commission. But if, if you look on on part of this survey, but uh, generally most of them say that when they park out on the street, it's only for 15 or 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some. You know his. Uh, how would you, uh, question, how many minutes do you have you stay in the typical space to park on High Street or Lafayette Road? The most was one to five minutes. The next one was five to ten minutes and then dropped off considerably to uh, ten to thirty minutes with not many people at all saying that they're, they're not there over the hour. Um, and if you look at the signs down there uh, and you see uh, how when they park in the municipal lot, less is... The first one is less than an hour and a half. The most is one to two hours. Yeah. Um, so, and the signage is it's not so clear or not clear at all. That's kind of what, where the park came with there. So that's where the signage comes in. Um, so I think by looking at this, people want to see, they, they want to see it the, somewhat the way it is. Um, which again, we have some that is one hour, some that is two hours. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the more important thing is they want to see enforcement and they want to see signage yeah. and they want, they, want, they want it so that people can move. We have some people that park there all day long. Yeah. Matter of fact, the other night when the snowstorm, the, the cops towed a couple of vehicles because they were parked overnight in front of the, uh, the lane building or cargo yeah. building, I guess you call it. Mm. Uh, but, and that, that's, that's, part of, that's part of the parking anyways. But the one, the one hour generally I think seems to be and that's what I take out of this and what I take from the people that I talk to, that one hour just generally seems to be fair. Uh, yeah, you know, and that could be, but a lot of people have come to me and they don't like that idea. I mean, I'm not saying I disagree with you yep. at all, um, but I find that people say, well, it should at least be two hours, and then maybe and people, some people don't think that's enough. I, I personally feel the best way that we can deal with this is if the business... Uh, people that are there and are affected by it, they should come in and we can have a meeting where they're on the agenda and we can talk about it mm -hmm. because uh, we only have this little information about, um, you know, we ask them to, you know, send in information. But um, I totally agree that we should change the signage so that it makes sense. And then maybe when you go to do that, you'll find that some other things make sense. 
but I think that it's not pretty clear how the people that are the um, business community there, they have not come here and even complained about it. So I think that's what we have to look at, in my opinion. Mrs. Wolseley? I was talking with a resident yesterday, and it kind of jogged my memory. I think I'm remembering correctly. Didn't we have parking meters on the south side of High Street? In the I don't days. ever remember any parking Seems meters. Seems to me we had, and they, and they pulled them out. No. And there Did were we? holes in the... Not 30, not yeah, not, not, not in 30, 30 years. Five years I've been around now. Oh, okay. No. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't remember, ever remember parking meters. I was thinking that we had meters there and they got they used, pulled out. We used to have somebody that would go around and chalk the tires and had, had, a, oh. had a police you officer downstairs, that but you can't do that anymore. You have to take no. pictures of them instead. Okay. So <laughs> do we want to poll everybody, see what everyone wants to do? What's your suggestion? I, I think it's a... People who are impacted by this get together and and then ask to come in yeah. and talk about it. Give us them. their suggestions. I, yeah. I think that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Regina, I think your idea is good, Rick. I think I've talked to people this morning downtown and they didn't even know this survey was happening. So mm -hmm. I think that maybe yeah. we need yeah. to have them come in and make sure that we're yeah. Listening. It's like the old story, you know. The, um, squeaky wheel gets the grease. Yeah. Uh, I think your idea is good and I think I think when you when you get people saying they only park there f for one to five to ten to fifteen minutes, it wouldn't pay to if you if you had somebody down there enforcing it, like right. a parking meter, you, you wouldn't be able to it wouldn't pay for the person's salary mm -hmm. if they're only writing one ticket a day or something. Yeah. You know, wouldn't yeah. we don't have the Just, people to enforce all this stuff. I'm yeah. sorry, but people want Mill Road speeding enforced and yeah. people want this enforced. Yeah. We don't have, I mean, Sawyer says that every time he comes in with staff for 50, and we have how many, Jamie? 30? We have 30 this time of year, you have 30 for full time across the entire well, it's gone up to 36 mm -hmm. school resource officers. Yeah. The, and just offer yeah. a couple suggestions the, the, the enforcement part. That's different from police. Yeah, I'd leave the enforcement to the chief to speak to. With regard to the signage, remember that Public Works, we have a huge facelift going on in that area and that's what in the spring. Right. It's a great deal of signage. There have been a number of public meetings to take input on that, but there's a big facelift. So whatever the board decides on time, you know, what the feedback is yeah. from folks, that's the perfect time to do that. And that's, that's I think it's next spring is that project beginning. It's a substantial right. one. It's yeah. got all kinds of changes coming to that downtown area, to that, the facelift, the look, the yeah. lineup, and the signage is a part of that. Jen's been working on that, and, and I've been present for a couple of those public hearings where they've taken input on it. So that's where I, I take it in bites. If you have folks coming to you, as the chairman yeah. has said, you can look further on whether you want to change the timing. But it's critical you make that decision before mm -hmm. that project facelift yeah. so Jen can get it into the plans exactly. yeah. and the appropriate signage. And we can work around it and they can do a great job and make it cohesive. Yeah, Rick. Um, so in, in the past, we have had problems with people using the back end of that parking lot as, like, you know, if they've gone to Florida and they leave their camper or whatever down there for six months. We, we don't want to, I don't think we intend to have permanent storage parking there. Is well, that think, happening down there, Mr. Walsh? It has from time from to time, time. Every time, we, once in a while, we have the department go down and, and police it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have it in a number of our lots across the town where time to time you will find somebody that leaves their car. Right. Uh, I mean, it's, it's very well overall dealt with, but we absolutely have cars in that lot that get left for extended periods of time. We do. And the police At deal the with them on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah, yeah. because that, that's just wrong. Yeah, I mean, it is. It is so totally it wrong. Is. They don't allow that anywhere. Happens in a bunch of our lots, and yeah. as they come up, we deal with them as abandoned yeah. vehicles or take and steps to make yeah. them move. Basically, if people think they can leave their car in a taxpayer's spot, it's, mm -hmm. it just isn't right. Yeah. Fred, is there, is there sure. some way we could put a requirement on that lot that once a week, that Swing row through. has to be clear. If you vote it, we'll so do they it. can it allows public works to clean. So I've heard from some of the businesses down there, they wouldn't mind even putting together a group of themselves, yeah. similar to the rail yeah. trail, to clean that area up. Yeah, yeah. It, so. it, it, that happens on the big storms constantly. If you see, they'll post and say because it's the overnight on the 
east side of that Correct. lot. Right. They'll post and say, we're going to be clear and everything has to be out of here, basically. And we've yeah. done that at this it, meeting before. It happens all the time. It happens yeah. in every big yeah. storm where they have to move. Mm -hmm. So that's honestly the time, other than a complaint, when you realize that a vehicle's there for an extended period of time. And yeah. there's two ways they deal with it. One is they put all the snow on top of it and it doesn't go anywhere for a while. Yeah. And police tows or police tow it as an abandoned vehicle. Yeah. So they deal with it on a case-by-case -case basis. I think they do a fairly decent job of it, but yeah, there are folks that take advantage of the generosity yeah. of the town with free parking and yeah. what have you, and, and that happens. Police there's, do a very good job of dealing with them. There's the one there now with Florida plates that yep. hasn't moved since it snowed. Yep. Actually, so. you could put that on the, on the uh, signs. That if you're talking about signs... The best way is just to tow it and move it. Well, yeah. And that's what should be happening. Yeah. That just isn't right. It's completely wrong, like so many other things, and no one enforces it. Mm -hmm. That is, I believe it's isn't. I thought it was no overnight parking there. No, they, no, no. there's a section that we're talking about specifically yeah. for overnight parking, which is the east side. side. Right. Oh, so there is. Right. Yeah, there is for the residents that Does live along say, that area. Yes. Not leave it How long months. can they leave it? it it's posted as overnight. I mean, yeah. the law it's technically not. says you need permission of the property owner for I think it's more than 24 hours. Yeah. And again, that's an enforcement issue. If you want to talk right. to the chief about yeah. these other issues, I'd like to speak like, to it. But at some point, they have the chief come in. Yeah. Right. And, and talk about this and the other park. And I think it's a great again, idea. Again, Rick, with all of the issues that they have on their plate, I think they do a fine job. Is there from time to time a problem? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. But yeah, when they're it's aware of it, they deal with it. for many years. And so they deal is, with it as it comes. down the road. It's another one of those things. It's same issue we used to have road. down the beach. You know, the same issue on the side streets when we, we weren't as well identified at what a parking spot and that type of thing. We, we've, mm -hmm. we've had those issues for many, many years. Now, and we deal with them as they come. Do we have the ability to have our parking enforcement work? more than just the summer do we have um I, the chief will have to speak to that i said the vast majority some of them are young we have some folks i'm sure that that are uh, we'll have to take a look at whether they're seasonal or part-time year-round but yeah we if we could look at that certainly now so just we for the heck of it what happens at those uh, parking rides to the peak are you allowed to park overnight in those those are thankfully state dealt with <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um there are some that do absolutely right yeah. yeah. absolutely they they yeah, if you know, if people are allowed to do that, people could go there. Tempest Swamp Roads, many cars park there overnight. Yeah, yeah. yeah it gets used too. for it gets used any lot that's available for an extended. It yeah. happens mm -hmm. if we're not paying for it, which for, none of us are looking to do. But it's it's an issue if you're not monitoring on that kind of a level, and it's something that happens from time to time. But the vast majority <laughs> operates very well up there. I do think that this new facelift in the downtown at the end of the project is going to be. You know, big changes and an opportunity to really make the aesthetic better, make the signage better to help mm. that. Whatever you decide the time limits are. It does, uh, it, I'm just going to point this out, um, that I've heard that both the new parking garages they built in Portsmouth and in Newburyport are not even being used. Yeah, I've read the uh, Portsmouth one struggling to have folks. Yeah, uh, yeah. and the one in Newbury Court's it, as bad, if not yeah. worse. Mm. So, you know, it's hard, but you got to sort of Get, bring the people to what they're allowed to do and how they're supposed to do mm -hmm. it. You have to educate them because here that, the millions have been spent and the people still don't use it. Yeah. So, Two years ago, we, uh, we actually went through the upper parking lot on High Street and on the per, what we call the permanent parking, which is on the east side, right. uh, we actually went through and made lists of the vehicles. Some of them had license plates that expired three years ago. Uh, <laughs> all kinds of crazy things going on. Then we let, made lists of all those infractions, mm -hmm. reported them to the police department, and the police department went down and got a hold of every single one of those property owners, and those cars left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were gone. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's interesting. So we'll see where we go from there on that issue. Do you think that we came to... Yeah, well, yeah, like I said, the, the, the downtown business people want to get together. They, they yeah, come to me and, and talk to me about... Yeah, glad to put them on the agenda. That, or just even meeting amongst themselves, and maybe they meet with, with Jen Hale and find out what okay. they're going to do, so what the plans are, so they can... Because they want to be part of the solution. They don't want to be part of the problem. Yeah, yeah and I think, yeah. again, the, the, the plans and the informational meetings of what it looks like is great, but you folks have to decide whether you want to change the timing. She can help with the, you know, exactly. and the plans yeah. for exactly. what exists. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't put that off on, okay. on the public works to deal with that. If you want to have a, a group here or folks mm -hmm. that come in, uh, that's fine. But as far right now, the plans are going forward based on what's out there. So yeah. if you want to change that, I don't you think should they really want that to change or, much of it. They just want yeah. some better signage. Yeah, and I agree. And, I, and I, I've seen the plans that they yeah. have, and they are good. But now's the time to do it with 
and find out what the parking is going to be, whether it's going to be an hour, two yeah. hours, hour and a and half. And maybe after the first year before the, st the, the meeting, perhaps we have Public Works come in and her team can yeah. show you what, what that looks like right now, what the intention is. I, I'd like to see feedback first, so we're not sitting here for hours fiddling over the whole neighborhood. So I'd like them to get together and figure something out yeah. and then come All in. All they have to do is ask. Yeah. Okay. Um, moving on to closing comments. Did you have any, Jamie? No, sir. No. <laughs> you look like you want to say I'm just something. Just uh, I'm meeting with the board under uh, non-meeting with legal counsel under RSA 91A2, but you don't need a motion. Okay, I have one closing right. comment. Yeah. The Warren articles, the money Warren articles, the reason why I didn't vote to move them to the budget committee tonight was because I know that there's some that we're still waiting for. And as much as I know the Budget Committee wants to get those Warren articles, I am not done reviewing in totality what the effect of the Warren articles are going to be. And I am not prepared this year to move them toward anyone until I am ready to do that. So that is my decision. I have reviewed them. I have two sets of notes on them. And once we have received them all, the town prepared ones, then I will make decisions on them. Well, I would like to just say as a closing comments that this is the way we always do it. No one else is complaining. If she wanted to change it, she should have made not it. Not complaining, she change it. just not voting. Okay, and you're not representing the people so far either. Okay. Oh, uh, and uh, a joint. Uh, Adjourn Motion to adjourn at adjourn or are we going adjourn to adjourn? Fire. Adjourn, yes. Oh, okay. Seven forty-three. Okay. Second. For all oh, we, you know, I. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Channel Twenty-two. Then you're move into non no, 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 no